Genesis chapter 26 on your own, but I want to key in on St. John chapter 14 today. I'm not preaching the text, the entire text. It's something I want to pull out of there. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mentioned, if it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Look at verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Verse 4, listen. And where I go, ye know, and the way ye know. 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye have known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Listen. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. This is really where I'm keying in. And it suffices us. Jesus said unto him, listen to verse 9, I have been so long time with you, and yet had thou not known me, Philip? Look at this. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how said thou, show us the Father? I want to talk about something that I think that will be a blessing to all of us today. Like father, like son. <laughs> like father, like son. I want to say something to the father today, and it's very personal with this message to know really who you are, that you need to know what a father is before I go any further. A father means source, the original source, and that's who you are. You were the first one pregnant. That's right, brother. Come on now. You the first one had, don't say a baby, but a woman came from you. That's right, brother. That's right. book. So look at your wife and say, be careful how you talk to me. You my source. <laughs> you may want to turn around and say, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now I know some of you women looking at what? That's right, The man was the first one pregnant. That's right, Reverend. Yeah. What did God do? He put Adam to sleep and brought you into existence. The woman was not the first one to produce. The man is. You get your blood from your daddy and not your mother. Now, if you come on Wednesday night, you hear me, but it's pouring out stuff. You get revelation. Your blood come from your, from your dad and not your mother. And that is why I tell people to eat to your blood type because it's your blood from your father. And some people were asking me when I was at a church and I was talking to an all well mixed congregation to eat to your blood type and they looked at me crazy. I said, because you know what to eat. That's why I'm health as I am. My weight came down normally, and I'm not on a drop of medicine. My wife either. I don't see her taking nothing. But one of the things I've noticed at our age and pushing seven to four, I got energy, and I start eating to my blood type. And what I don't suppose to eat, I don't eat it. In fact, we just got the book in, didn't we, Martha? Uh, the eat for, you've been asking me, eat for your blood type. And members have been asking for it, and Martha found it. And the food you don't suppose to eat, you don't eat. Amen. Now, how you tell a Baptist preacher don't eat chicken? <laughs> All of us already died over that. Right. But if my blood type, I'm an old negative, I got a lot of acid in my body. 
So I, like Deke said, he's an old negative. We can eat a steak and go to bed, can't we? Go straight to sleep. And some folks stay up all night. Oh. I remember when I was young, used to have a lot of teenage bumps. And I was telling my teacher, I had bumps everywhere, and I didn't know. I was sitting around old preachers. That's all I sat around when I was a kid, old preachers. Kids didn't, they got on my nerve. When I was 12 and 13, I didn't want to talk to kids. I cannot talk to children about, God, who preached last night? You can't talk to them. They looked at me crazy. What is he talking about? Did you hear that sermon last night? These are babies. So they got on my nerves. They didn't know what I was talking about. So I went and got around all the preachers. That, I said, who preached? Man, that guy preached last night. Hey, Amen? They, 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 they weren't where I was. But I remember my school teacher said, wash your hand, wash your face with your hand, never with a rag. And that'll stop you from having a lot of bumps. But then now, you probably see two tone on my face, see one little, little lighter than the other. I'm using black and white ointment, Mary, trying to get rid of bumps. So they were saying use black and white ointment. Oh, this generation don't know what that is. And it made two colors, and the bumps were still there. I never knew I had all that acid in me until this age. Look, I already got a lot of acid in me. And cokes are full of acid. Rip taught me, your husband. And I said, stop eat drinking cokes. Then the bums went away. So your blood type, I got something that me eat up a lot of meat because I need a lot of proteins. Now you may be the opposite. What's poison to me may be healthy to you. So when you give the body what it's asking for, it'll disperse it out of you and say, I got what I need. And when you give it what it doesn't want, you walk around here with a belly out like this, the, the food, the body say, I don't know where to store it. Yeah. <laughs> and you're learning something, why they took that Christian doctor off TBN, who was telling folk to eat to their blood type, they shut him down. Isn't that amazing? And that's the first sign of losing weight, being healthy is to get on a diet, and that's the greatest diet I know. And I one time had all of my members drinking water called a water diet, and they were losing weight. Then quit preaching on the melon. But all the things that can make you healthy by eating in your blood type, and then I shared about garlic, uh, garlic, onion, and ginger. And one lady called me, what's that, pal? I said, that's your blood pressure medicine. And another man called me the other day, said, how you make that? I said, take one garlic clove, and one ginger root, and what's the other? Whole onion. And, and blend that together. And I said, take a teaspoon of that, man. Call me with high muscle. Y'all put some water? That's powerful. And when you take those three, I said, I haven't had no blood pressure since. And you just take a teaspoon. My, one of my members called Corpus Rebel, you know that stuff you call Fleming Potion, broke up all that stuff in my chest. Think about garlic, onion, and ginger. Together. Now, members been coming to me to make it. I'm not making you know, you ain't putting me in jail. <laughs> make your own. Help me, Holy Ghost. We are the original source, the man is. God put Adam to sleep and brought out of him woe man. Somebody said when Adam, when Eve came out and said woe man, said, look out, man, woe man. Amen. Because she came from, she looked like him, but he designed her and called her the weaker vessel. Yes. She, man was for God's comfort, the woman was for the man's comfort. That's right, yes, Are you following me? Yes. This good teaching so you understand what is a man. He represents the head. He is the source. You got to make him feel like he's the head. Yeah. If you destroy his internal feeling, he ceases to be a man. Uh -huh. When you tell him you're nothing, you kill something that'll make him hate you for the rest of his life. Yeah. Come on, preacher. A woman needs attention told she's beautiful. Yeah. A man needs respect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. You don't have to tell him all kind of sweet yes, stuff. Sir. That's for a woman. You know, I said the other day when you send, your, send a woman roses, you send that woman some roses, brother, and you don't send her but 11. And say, baby, I sent you 11 roses. That's not a dozen. He said, but go look in the mirror and you make the dozen. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Your pastor crazy. <laughs> Boy, you get biscuits in the morning. You get bacon in the next. <laughs> Tell her when you look in the mirror, you make the dozen. Why is that like? Why a woman move what? She likes attention. And Satan knew that. And he went after the woman first, not the man, because she's the weaker vessel and she got some attention from a man talking to her in the garden. He didn't say didn't come as a female, came as a man. And he tempted her in the wilderness. Why did Satan go after him and not her? He wasn't after her. He was after him. And she brought him down. Yeah. And when God came walking, he never asked for Eve. Come on now. He said, Adam, where are thou? And I'm sure the man looked around and said, Eve was, <laughs> but that's not in the Bible. God said, I don't want her. I want you. I made her for you. But I made you for me. So the man need to know what God is to whatever he does. You need to know what God respects of you is the head of your house. Yes. Yes, sir. If you can't be the head of that house, you don't have nothing. That's why God told a man to work from the curse. He told a woman to bear the pain. Yes. He never told her to work, and if your wife working, she just helping you. That's right. Yes, sir. That's why you ought to make sure you treat her nice enough to get up early in the morning. Go, baby, I need a new car. We need a new house, and I don't want you sick. Come on, Reverend. Come on now. You gotta appreciate a woman who worked. When I was young and we got married, my wife was working at the base and helping me out, just like I was preaching, running revivals. So she helped me out, and I helped her out. So now she don't do nothing but just enjoy the benefit. <laughs> and she know I built by give her everything she need. I take care of all the bills in my house. I pay everything in my house. Amen? She take her money and spend it do what she wants to. Amen? She's retired. I pay everything. But that was a time I couldn't. But when I, I worked to and ran revivals and living in a two-bedroom apartment, but still I know my role. So God know that if a man have a woman taking care of him, it's an insult. Now why I'm saying all that, because like father, like son. Like let me put some Bible on this. In Genesis, right. there's a man named Isaac. Uh -huh. And he had his son, his wife, she was a beautiful woman. Men were looking at her. And Isaac started telling men, you don't tell folks you're my wife. Tell them you're my sister. And when he did that, he thought he would be murdered by men who would steal his wife. This is Isaac. Now, the Bible says some men were going out for her. Yes. Great men were going out to her. And then when the king and others found out that she was married to Isaac, told her that's your sister. When that's your wife. We, we, somebody would have killed you for that beautiful woman. The Bible, she was very beautiful. Yes. But he lied yes. and swear that's my sister when that was his wife to keep somebody from killing him to get her. Yeah. Who did that before? His own daddy. My Lord. What did Abraham do? The father of Isaac. Yeah. Abraham lied about Sarah. Yeah. And when he went in other countries, he said, now don't tell folk you know, I'm married to you. Tell people that's my are you my sister? And the king got to looking at Sarah. The king got to looking at her. Wow, look how good, boogie moogie. 
and no, I'm in the Bible. Yeah, you in the and guess what happened? When they went to ask Abraham more about Sarah, it all oh, now that that's that's my sister. That's not my wife. <laughs> then the king got his eyes on his wife. And when the king brought her in to steal her from Abraham, the father of the faithful. Yes, yes. Come on. God told him, that king, I dare you to touch her. God showed up and told the king, don't you touch that woman. Because that is a chosen vessel. That's Abraham's wife. And I dare you to steal her and marry her. Then the king called Abraham in. Why you tell us? Yeah, yeah. That was your wife. Why you lie? Yes, yes. So the father of the faithful weren't always faithful. Right. <laughs> and what lie gets you in trouble. And they like to stole his wife. Who is like the daddy? You all getting this? He did just what Abraham did, his son Isaac. Lied about a beautiful woman and like the lost her. Father like son. And look, what else happened behind those boys? Here come a rascal behind Isaac named Jacob. Nothing but a trickster. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And who Jacob act like? Lying, cheating, beating everybody out of everything they ever had. Father like son. Yes. Yes. What am I? You probably ain't heard no sermon like this. <laughs> Look, man, your son wants to be like you. Just like it. I have observed some things by even my own life that I never shared by my daddy. I never ever left my family. We gone through, you and stay 53 years and married 19 years old. We were nothing but children. And we got, got into it several times. But I know one thing when my son came to me, Mr. So Fleming would take me up the country and I going down the city. <laughs> we were just fussing like young folk. And I was packing my things, I'm gone. Getting out of here. And boy, while I was in that guest room, a little fella came in there crying and closed the door. And Dad, where you going? I said, boy, go back to bed. He said, where are you going? I said, go back to bed. He was crying. He said, I don't care what you and Mama goes through. Don't you leave me. I looked. I said, what? How you know? Don't you leave. He was crying. Ari, he was a little fella. Just don't leave me. I put my bags down. <laughs> One thing I put my bag down because I saw what child support is. <laughs> man came asked me, man came asked me, man came to room one day and asked me, Reverend, should I marry this woman? And you a prophet, what do you see? I said, child support. <laughs> But I know the one thing about my daddy. My mama and daddy fuss every morning. Every morning. They I know all of us, all eight of us. They know how they just fuss. But they got ten children. Two of them died. And I asked Daddy, you fuss so much? Well, why don't you just go and shut up, boy? My daddy never left us. Uh, he drank that stuff, <laughs> and I seen him drink that stuff and say, ah. <laughs> I'm so important. That's why I'm the preacher I am. That's why I'm the preacher I am. Yes, sir. I saw it all, came up around that environment, had some rough brothers. But you know what? He stuck with us. Yeah. And I loved him for that. Because a lot, it's about 24 women to one man. Did you know it's 24 women to one man? Somebody says up to 30 now. And there's some desperate women out there. (laughs) 
That's why the Bible allowed them to have seven and eight wives. I never understood that man could have seven and eight wives. I was in, in uh, India when I was at so I said, hey, you all out here can marry as many wives you want. Driver said, yes, we can, Father. They call your father. I said, man, y'all got it made. Y'all got that many wives? It's not that easy, Father. I said, man, you, got, you can have four or five wives. I said, what's the problem? You got to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, only the rich can have all those wives, and you got to have a house for each one of them. Oh, to live out the woods. But here I'm going to show you something. My father, when looking at my sons, and I'm seeing it, I seen them take stuff, but never go nowhere. And I'm seeing a little bit of me in them. I saw it in Ari, how he never wanted to hurt no woman's feeling. And ended up with a kid that he never saw. I said, why couldn't you just say goodbye to him? I, don't know. I said, well, what you, if you don't want why? I got it from you. I said, what you got from me? Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? I got it from you. You didn't, take, you didn't go nowhere. I said, I went in the river, shut the door. I said, hmm. You don't never know who watching you. Daddy never left. I never left. And I see my son. But here's what you don't understand when a father like son would have happened. I did a little such on it. Most of the young men in jail were raised by no father. Most of the crime, we did a research on them. I was reading about it last night. Came up without a father. That's right. Go to the prison and ask how many of them. Go to men who committed serious crime. And then look at the ones who had a father. Yes. Because like father, like son. And you as a father got to be cautious how you carry yourself because your boy won't be like you. Look. I just got prayed about every one of my boys preaching. Even the weak one went to preaching. The oldest one preaching. The baby preaching. The weak one preaching. <laughs> and I thought, look at them, wow, all of them preaching. They watching be like a daddy. Like father, like son. Your son was watching you. Your son want to be like you. He want to walk like you, talk like you, act like you. I remember I used to lift weights around the house, and I was a little boy, and I'm um, lifting a little weight, and I went in there one day and caught that joker, and they're messing with my weight. Lift them up. I said, boy, what you doing? Nothing. Now when he got older, he teach me not to lift so much. <laughs> What made him go down there? I just saw Kaylee down there in my gym. Uh, boy, what you doing down there? He can't even talk. We had to cut off the treadmill. That joker smart enough to go up there and hit that Martin. We, he, I went there and look, he walking on the treadmill. See, seeing grandpa, boy, get off there. I had to take that thing out. He watching me. Your son watching you. He want to be like you. He want to act like you. And you have to be so cautious because like father. Girl want to be like mama. I don't know why God didn't give me a girl. Oh, Lord, I want a girl. You know, I want somebody to spoil. Do you know what? I got one now. But I didn't know I was going to have competition when <laughs> Tamara came. I went to shop. I got a girl. I got a girl. And Timmy was looking at me. I go, oh Lord, that's competition. She's the only, that's his girl. And she's the only girl, and when she would come to the house, I just sit there and look, play all the movies I want to get for her. One of that girl. It's something so unique. A girl gonna stick by daddy. They spoil daddies. And mama spoiled boy. The one thing you got, what girls y'all remember when little girls in, in the mirror and I got mama high heels on? Mm -hmm. And now she in your window putting on makeup? 
Why is she in there doing that? Mother like daughter. She saw you doing it. And what your son see you do, dad, that's what he want to be. And you're understanding that if you grow up being nothing around him, the statistics say all the gang members, most of those young men committing crime are raised without a father. No man in the house. Raised by mama. No image of what work ethic is. No image about who first getting up out the bed. I'm always the last one to get in my bed when I was raising my children. Checking every window. Checking every door. You don't be the same way you all are. You get in the bed first, leave the woman. <laughs> On your own, sweetheart. <laughs> that joke will knock out. You the protector. Am I helping some man be cautious how you carry yourself because that boy wants to be just like you. Now look, father like son, look at what happened in John chapter 14. Jesus said, I let not your heart be troubled, believe in me, believe also in father, believe also in me. And Thomas got sarcastic when he's talking about I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, how shall we know the way? Thomas kept asking questions. Oh, and, you know, he was always inquisitive. And uh, Jesus said to him, I and the Father are one. I am like my Father. Read the text. We are one. The Father, I'm the Son. But we are one. And when you read John chapter 14 on your own, you see, I'm the image of my Father. Like my Father, like son. How is it that Jesus is like his father? Ask me how, Reverend. Reverend. Look at the characteristic of Christ. Look at what he did like the father. Uh Number one, let's see here a minute. One thing we find out about Jesus is just like God the father. The father has always, even in the Old Testament, been a forgiving father. He always forgave Israel. He forgave Adam and forgave Eve. He didn't kill them. They started dying. Death set in when they disobeyed. But God could have killed Adam and Eve the day they disobeyed. What held back God's hand? Because he's a forgiving father. What held back Thank God, Jesus, that he forgave people. Yeah. Let's look at John chapter 8. Come on now. A woman caught in the act. Mm-hmm. By law, she's supposed to have been stoned. Church folk caught her. Mm-hmm. Why you say church folk? Because they were the religious people. So they had to have been peeping. Church folk are nosy. They'll hug you and be talking about you. And they'll be hallelujah. And go back and go on the phone. And there's phone ministry then. We'll talk about each other. Let me tell you something. They had to have been watching that woman to catch her. How would you catch a woman? The Bible said in the act. That dead in the middle of the act. You know somebody was well, peeping yeah. to catch you. And I always told you it was a, a scheme because they brought up the man, they brought up the woman, the strong her, didn't bring the man. Where was he? He must have been a deacon. <laughs> he, he must have been a preacher. <laughs> preacher said no <laughs> I'm picking on the digging so much. Forget the breeches now. But whoever he was, they didn't want him out there. They set a trap to get her. Who were they trying to trap? 
Jesus. They said, now the law says stone her. They're dragging the woman. Yeah. Yeah. Threw her on the ground. Yeah. Holding rocks. Well, look, here's the question. If you're going to stone her, what bring her to Jesus for? That's right. If she caught, and the law said, if you caught an adult, you'd be stoned, then why didn't you all stone her? Why you dragged her to Jesus? It was a trap yeah. for Jesus. Because if he had said stone her, they would have gone back and told the Romans and the authority he gave permission to kill somebody. And if he had said don't touch her, they would have gone back and said you broke the law of Moses. That's, right. That's a trap. Yeah. I don't know how he would have got out of that. You right. let her go, you in trouble. Stone her, you in trouble. And Jesus show you how forgiveness like the father. She's supposed to have been stoned. He stooped down on the ground. And we don't know what he wrote. Better praise God he didn't. He wrote whatever he wrote they saw themselves. He must have said liar, big mouth, homemaker, thief. And when they looked down there and saw what they been doing, the Bible said he dropped the rocks and walked off. Yeah. Why did they do that? Jesus knew their sin. You know, church folk need to stop talking about others who fail. I got a word for a very famous preacher just stepped down and said he committed a sin. I want to give you a word. You have no business stepping down for your ministry. You ain't no God, Junior. Go back to your pulpit. To the people who need you and we need you. You have touched our lives. You're not here to please the world. All have sinned. Everybody in here is guilty. And we can't make ourselves, no matter how good we live, think we are God. <laughs> Go back to your pulpit. Yeah. Ain't nobody in this church worthy on, to talk about nobody. We are sinners saved by grace. And all the devil want to do to us is quit. And you can't let the enemy win. Go back. We need you, Tony Evans. Why are we worrying about what unbelievers think? We're Christians. Why I said that? We serve a forgiving God. None of us are in here can, I don't care how many tricks you pull uh, or whatever you've done. Now, we'll pay for our wrong, yes, yes. but you are forgiven. Yes. And everybody, and look, don't pull no tricks. Just be human. I'm weak. I made errors. Everybody in here Got some ring around the collar. Just don't, don't try to scheme on nobody at all. Because even if you do, God still forgives. A man, woman one time was scheming. You know, if you scheme now, it'll catch up with you. And this woman one time had murdered a lot of people, and a jury sent her to prison for life. And she said, to the court, she said, I'll get you judged one way or the other. And he said, sentence you to life in prison. She went to prison, and she schemed and concocted some diabolical scheme. And, she, and, and there was a man working that every time a prisoner died, they put him in a casket. And this old man was the one who would take him off and bury him. So when the bell rang every morning, that mean a prisoner died. She went to that old man and said, look, 
I got millions in the bank. If you do what I said, I'll pay off all your bills, and I'll make sure they get taken care of. I'm a wealthy woman. And what do you want me to do? She said, whenever they get ready to bury another prisoner and the bell ring, I'm going down there and getting the casket. <laughs> and sometimes they have to bury two in the casket. He said, really? He said, if I get out, now when you hear that, I'm going down there and get in, and remember the next day, you come dig me up. So the bell began to ring. She jumped up. He left the door open. She slipped down and got in the casket. And when they rolled her to the casket, she was smiling. I got out. I'm out. I'm going to get that jewelry, one way or the other. And she was just hooning. Then you hear the bell ring, dum, dum, dum. And they were carrying her, and finally, put it down in the ground, and she heard him dropping the dirt, and she was smiling. Oh, tomorrow morning, he coming and getting me out. And that night, then nothing happened. <laughs> Next morning, nothing happened. She kept saying, where is he? Where is he? He didn't come. So she took a match and struck it. You see who she was lying next to it? It was the same old man. <laughs> They're supposed to get her out. <laughs> you, you reap what you sow. God is such a forgiving God that he forgave the woman. Who is he acting like? Father, like son. How many times Israel did wrong? And God forgave them. Father, like son. Why didn't God kill him and get rid of them when they disobeyed? Father, like son. I got to wrap this up now. Father, like son, not only in the forgiveness, but you can see Jesus acting so much like his father when he sacrificed his life on the cross. How many times did the father sacrifice? How did the father sacrifice? He sent his son. Yes. God so loved the world, he didn't send a committee. No. God so loved the world, he didn't write a resolution. No. God so loved the world, he gave. Yes. And God is a giver. And the son was a giver. I want to wrap this up. One more I want to tell you about. God, he's so much like the father that the father, you can see Jesus acting like the father. He'll give it to you if you want it. If you don't want to be saved, God will not force you to be saved. And this is what you see in God the father. He never forced you to serve him. It's by will. And one thing that I always was thinking about when Jesus was walking along at the, and the man at the pool of Bethesda, Watch what he asked him. Here this man had been there 38 years, sick, couldn't get in. The first thing that Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? In other words, do you want it? God, he's acting like the father. God will never force you to serve him. Do you want it? The first thing he, Jesus is asking this man, I know you've been here 38 years, but will thou? be made whole. God can't help nobody if you don't want help. God will not try to force you to save him if you don't want to be saved. It's up to you to go to hell or heaven. It's up to you. You making the decision of your own. And Jesus knew this man had been there 38 years and he asked him, do you want it? Look at somebody and say, how bad do you want it? Father like son that God will never force you to serve him. You got to do it by choice. And I'm closing father because I want you to grasp this how well you're being watched and look at how God was like his son. 
and the son came like the father that God sacrificed. He sacrificed his life. That's what a man is. He, you know, I learned when you walk with a woman, the man's supposed to walk on the right side and she stay on the left side. All right, young man, you got to understand that. Now, some of y'all have pushed the woman on out there. <laughs> no, you know what you said? When you walk on the right side and the car coming and she's on the left, you're saying, baby, before I lose you, let them hit me. That's what Jesus did. Jesus said before the God before you send them to hell, hit me. Before any of them, they are mine. I'm sacrificing for. And when he was on the cross, hanging there from the sixth to the ninth hour, he was just like his father. Give it up what he has, which is in life, so that you might live. And this morning you ought to be grateful that Jesus will like his father yeah. or we would all be lost today. He will hang it on the cross yeah. and look at him looking down at sinners yeah. saying, Father, yes, forgive them. Yeah. They know not what to do. Yeah. Acting like his daddy yeah. when he hung on the cross, yes, dropped his head yeah. in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost and said, it is finished. Just like his father hung and died, gave up everything. But just like his father who forgave man, he got up from the grave like his daddy who got all power. And Jesus got up acting like his daddy. All power. All power. All power is in my hand. And just like his daddy, go into all the world. I want to witness. Tell somebody. God told the prophet, tell somebody how good I am. Jesus told his disciples, tell somebody what you have seen. Tell somebody I died on the cross and we like the Father ought to be a witness. Tell somebody God delivered you. Tell somebody God made a way. Tell somebody He picked me up. He turned me around. Tell somebody when you witness for God you're acting like your daddy. When you pray you're acting like your daddy. When you love, you're acting like your daddy. Everybody stand. Just like father. Look at somebody say, I'm acting like my daddy. And when somebody said, why are you always talking about the Bible? I'm acting like my daddy. He told me to be a witness. And when you forgive, Billy Graham's wife said the secret to marriage life is forgiveness. And that's my right. Now, you can't go around talking about your husband when he's forgiven you. There's you talking about he the devil and you haven't been no angel. My God. Come on, what about what you do? You need to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And I hear most women come to my office talking about him. What he did, what did you do? And that when I shut everybody up. All right, I heard about he ain't this, he ain't that. Now, what do you do? Yeah. Well, I didn't do that. Do you clean up his house? 
Do he come home to a hell raiser? You know, you can raise so much hell till when a dog see you, he'll go get up under the house. <laughs> now that's raising hell, lady, isn't it? I want to say something to me and go, we get put down so much by women who ain't a bit better. Y'all just sneaky with y'all. I'm old enough to see it. Sin is sin. And Lord can't talk about butter when both of them greasy. So you need to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Maybe I'm going to shut somebody up today. Take that man out. I don't care how bad he been. Say, I forgive you. And he going to ask, why? I'm a Christian. And I'm born again. I know you weak, and I know there's a lot of temptation out there. You got a man coming home with all these desperate women, you better shout. Some desperate women out there. Because there ain't many men. And a good man, oh yeah, they want him. But more than that, the devil want him. The devil always go after the anointed. If you are anointed, woman or man, you will be constantly under attack. Because the devil knows those who are anointed. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing about an anointed man. You can't stop him. An anointed woman, you can't defeat them. They're going to come out. Why? You know why? They got God's protection. Give myself a hand. church. There may be some men down here. I want the men, I don't know why God, I want men to come down and get on their knees and ask God for forgiveness. You've done some things you're ashamed of. But you know it doesn't hurt. Take your seat, women. Let some men come down here with me. You know, I'm going to set some, some brothers free. Come on down here, men. Come on down. I don't care what you used to do. Come on down with pastor. Because I want you to know the devil after you, you are a target. Young men, all of them. You are a target for the enemy. I've been talking to young I hate to want to cry about it. Talk to a young boy sitting in prison. They told me, come down. I'd never been in the prison. I said, why are you killed? But, and he couldn't talk. I said, look at me, young man. Why are you going around with gang members shooting and killing people? The mother begged me to go down and talk to him. I said, but the biggest problem with men, they won't come out and let it out. He said, my daddy left us. And I joined the gangs because I wanted a family. I said, really? They became my family. I said, well, why did they became my family? I had no daddy. And I was mad. Not because he left, but he forgot us. And it had me in tears. He said, Pastor, who told you to come down here and see me? I said, your mother. I said, but you, you don't have to be like your daddy when he's wrong. He said, what do you mean? I said, look at me. My daddy was an alcoholic. 
and never joined the church. And God put a baby in his house. I've been preaching since I was seven years old. Locking up in a bathroom, preaching, didn't know what it was. And you hear my sister saying it on my life legacy. I never knew. My sisters knew that about me till all these years when they were interviewed. And you go look at my life legacy on YouTube. They went to my dad and said, Daddy, he crazy. And we're going to have to take My sister said we're going to have to whip him. I always scared of my two oldest sisters. You know, I'm the baby next to the baby. And all these years, I didn't know when I was up there in that bathroom at seven years old preaching. Didn't know what it was. I just heard a man preaching, and I went to try and preach like him. And I'd be up there, Jesus, Jesus. I'm seven years old. My mother told my sisters, they said, go up there and get that boy out of that bathroom. He up there doing something again. And my sister said, when daddy came home, that daddy, he crazy. And dad said, what's wrong with him? He be up there just doing something. And we think you're going to have to whip him. Oh, we got to take him to a doctor. I never knew that. I thought they were gone when I was up there preaching. And I don't know where preaching came from. Nobody in that house went to church. But mama went to the primitive Baptist. My daddy, I ain't like my daddy. For many years, I was mad why he wasn't with me when I was going around as a child preaching. But my pastor, I saw it. He came to see my daddy once. And I was a little boy running around, but started preaching. And my pastor, J.J. Jordan, went to my dad and said, can I make your man out your son? Because he didn't go to church. He asked my daddy, can I make a man out of him? And my pastor started taking me around with him. Everywhere I go in, he said, the little boy, he preaches, all right, the little boy finna stand on the box. I get up on the little box and go to crying and preaching. And I didn't know why my pastor was taking me around. He got permission from my daddy. They knew each other. They lived next door to each other. When I went to Sandersville, <clears throat> at 13 years old, went to Elder High, there was never a Fleming family preaching. And all the Flemings in Sandersville won't see this boy who are preaching. I'm in the fifth grade. I go to Elder High and live with my Uncle Bud. My brother and I both went there. And I asked, I was mad at my daddy why he wasn't going with me. And an 80 year old man, white hair, I won't forget, said, Son, I know what happened to your daddy why he don't like preachers in church. I said, tell me, because I'm mad at him. He said, when your daddy was young down here, his daddy died early and caught pneumonia, and then his mother died. And he, he, the oldest, had to raise his two brothers and sister. And when his mama died, he went to the church, First Baptist Church in Sandville, and crying by my mama died, and wanted to have a funeral. And the deacon said she hadn't paid no dues and denied his mother to have a funeral at the church. And this old man said even the shaft went up there and went off on the deacons. He don't have a daddy or a mama, and why y'all won't have a funeral? I said, is that what happened? That's what went wrong with your daddy, why he hated church. I said, oh my God, my daddy couldn't read nor write. He had, you know why he couldn't be that father? He didn't know how to be a real father, and he tried to drink his troubles away. And I said, oh my God, that's what happened to my daddy. He said, why? I said, why he leave Sandville? He said, he got into it with a white man on the phone and got mad at him, and they called the Ku Klux Klan. And somebody had to raise money and get him out of Sandinville. He came to make him and got a job dishwashing and met an old man in there and taught him how to cook, and he met your mama. I said, oh, now I can forgive him. 
I know the story. He never had a man to teach him how to be a man. And some of you all are probably hiding that now. Why are you like you are? He didn't know how to be a man. He didn't know how to raise a man. So he drank his, tried to drink his trouble away. You know, I often tell you the story. When my daddy was dying, my daddy watched me watching my mother die of cancer, running from Macon, running from Atlanta, running down there to Macon, see about my mama and a student at Mohouse and like to have a heart attack at 35 years old. Mohouse is tough. They'll kill you up there. And I'm trying to handle that class and passing the church and, and wife three babies and trying to deal with hard-headed members so I can build a new church and all that stress. But I had to see about my mama dying of cancer and my daddy was watching me running down here. And when my mama was dying, they said she ain't got but a few days. I was to get my mama home. I put her in a home. The doctor said she's going quick. I went and got my mama and put her in a home and I sent word, Daddy, come see Mama. Went up there and saw Mama, said, Lord, Dawes just lying there. He couldn't take it and walked off. And I didn't think he loved Mama until Mama died, and he sat there crying like I never heard him cry. Why didn't God take me? And boy, I went to hollering. So I didn't think my daddy loved Mama. He did love her. But he didn't know how. He never been trained. And when my daddy was dying, I went and got in my car and drove to Macon. I said, now I know why God put me in this family. I'm a grown man now. And I saw him lying and I said, Daddy, will you take the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and let it go? He want to know what did I know. I ain't tell him. He looked at me and said, he, drew, he, he breathed, I will. I prayed, laid hands on him. Walked out before I could get home. He said, your daddy just died. I shouted, I got him in. I got him in. And that's why God put me in that house. Get him safe. I forgave him when I learned the truth. So when you learn the truth and know why that daddy wasn't there, probably didn't know how to be one. And never been taught to be one. There's a lot of black men never been taught how to take a woman out. All the while, I learned later years, I started taking my wife out now more. And old Don told me, I said, Don, what you do? You got to take her out. I said, that old Don, you're taking Sheila out every week. I'll take her off, preacher. I'm going to take her out today. <laughs> I just learned the secret. Take that woman out, bro. <laughs> Women love going out. I don't know what it is. We don't need all that. White men know that. Black men were slave weren't taught that. Make these words fall on your lips. Forgive your daddy when you know his story. Some men can't handle a lot of pressure and they'll walk off. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lord, I just pray that you use me today that some young man going to learn from others' mistakes. Thank you, I learned the truth about my own. Then I could forgive. When we've never been trained because of slavery, they robbed us of that and made us feel like we were inhuman. But we released that curse on our men today, that the next young man going to make a difference that he going to break a generation curse as I did. The only one to finish college in my family. That some young fella sitting here looking at me today said, I'm going to break that curse in this family. Somebody going to go to college and not going to raise no ignorant children. 
And I pray for a release now on our men to be like Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go back. Happy Father's Day. I think right now. Thank you, Fred. Thank you so much. Take her out. <laughs> Better take her out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I think right quick, though, we have a lengthy service. Pastor A Club want to come say something to me right quick. And if anybody want to join the church, better come now. You better come quickly. If you want to join the church, better come quick. I have a special meeting.